In this lesson, we can see how we can create this bouncing jelly ball. Now, we're using a principle called squash and stretched in this example. Now, while squashing and stretching an object, we should keep in mind that the volume of the object should be maintained as the same, whether it is being squashed or stretched. As you can see that when uh, it is being stretched, it becomes taller, but at the same time it becomes thinner. At the same time when it is being squashed, it becomes uh, shorter, but at the same time it becomes fatter. So this is the actual shape of the object, which is, which is the same volume as uh, it is being squashed or being stretched. Before we start with the animation, I just want to give you a little info about keyframes in Timeline and Range Slider. So, the bottom here in Maya, you will see uh, the timeline. So, this is the place where we'll create the animations, the keyframes. And then below that, we have something called a Range Slider. Now, Range Slider basically shows what should be the range of frames that should be visible in the timeline. Here you can see it starts with 1 and it ends with 24. So that's what you will see here. So this is frame number 1 and frame number 24. If I want to show more number of frames in my timeline, all I have to do is just simply click and drag in this range slider. So that shows more number of keyframes. Now if 48, 48 keyframes are not enough, we can also increase the frames here. Say for example, I can press 150. So now I will end up with 150 frames. Now, even though we have 150 frames, if you just want to focus on, let's say, 10 frames from frame number 100 to 110, all you have to do is just enter 100 here and enter 110 here. So now we will end up with just 100, uh, frame number 100 to 110 in our timeline. You can also manually pull this to show as many keyframes as you like. So here we have a sphere which is fully rigged and you have a small controller to control the sphere it's also called control curve so if I select the control curve I've got the attributes translate XYZ and rotate XYZ along with that I have a new attribute called squash by default it's zero let's see what happens if I increase this value now all I have to do is just select the label and use the middle mouse button and click and drag in the timeline forward if I go to value of 10 it squashes and this basically shows an impact to the ground so what happens when this jelly ball falls down to the ground it squashes down flat let's see what happens when I move uh, when I change the value in negative direction so I go back to 0 and then I push it further to minus 10 it shows as if uh, the jelly ball is falling down due to the gravity it's creating the shape of a water drop so these are the things that we will be using to create this animation basically this is being achieved with the help of uh, blend shape which we will be learning in the future lessons for now you can take this file and start working okay so let's begin the animation my animation is going to be less than 50 frames so I'll just keep the timeline to be from 1 to frame number 15. I'll turn on the auto key because we don't want to set key every single time we make a change. Because auto key is turned on every time I make a change automatically it will create the keyframe for that particular timeline. So because of this you have to be also careful which frame you're working on because when you make a change it will automatically create a keyframe for that particular frame. So to begin with I just want to push this ball up so I'll choose the move tool, pull it up, I'll give a value of something like 8. So I'm going to create keyframes for both translate Y and squash. So I'll select both of them by pressing control key, right click and choose key selected. Next time I make a change for any of these attributes it is automatically create a keyframe because of the auto key. So I'll go to frame number 15, I'll push it down to exact zero. So that's the place where it is actually creating the contact with the ground. And since it is falling down, I just want to uh, change the squash value to uh, minus 10. So it's actually stretching out to reach the bottom. So we can just play back. 
So there it is, a round ball, squash is zero. And at frame number 15, it is minus 10, which is touching the ground. And immediately when it touches the ground, it is supposed to uh, become squashed out. So in, in the immediate next keyframe, that is frame number 15, 16, I will make this plus 10. So let's see how that looks. Okay. So it is touching and it's squashing. Fine. So now let's go ahead and move to frame number, let's say, 22 approximately. And I'll pull it up. I translate Y. Pull it up something like 2.5. 2.5. Okay, so when it goes to the midway that this uh, at frame number 22, it should again become zero. That is a perfect circle. So squashed and then pushed up. Okay. I think I might have to push these two keyframes a little bit to the left for the squash. We can do that final changes later, okay? And then again, after let's say one, two, three, four, five, approximately here, frame number 28 or 27, I'll bring this back to zero. So it's again touching the ground. So when it is coming down again, it will stretch a little bit. So this time, no need to go all the way to uh, 10, minus 10. Instead, we can keep it something like minus 4.5 or minus 5. Okay, and again it is touching the ground, so the next keyframe it has to go squash. So something like five, positive five. And then again at frame number 20, 30 or 31, I can I have to push it up a little bit. It's not too much, maybe just 1.5. Again, it'll become zero, it's a perfect circle. And again, it's falling down, let's say frame number 34. These keyframes, I'm just making it arbitrary. There's no exact uh, value that you have to give. You can look at it. What I'm basically, if you look, you can see that initially I've given lots of time, uh, key, uh, lots of frames, and then a little less, and then a little less, and then a little less, because the speed is going down and the distance is coming down. So initially you will have lots of frames, then you have less and less and less. Finally, you will end up with just two close uh, keyframes. So at 34, I'll bring it down. So you can see, just come up, down, up, again, and down. So 34, I will have to stretch it a little bit, maybe point, sorry, minus 2.5. The next immediate next keyframe, it should become plus 2.5, maybe more since washing 4.5 and then I think it stays on the ground but again I'll just give a small movement upwards so that is minus 1 then the next one is like plus 1 or maybe 3 4 3 and then the next keyframe I can just bring it back to 0 now, if you're having little complica uh, complications in understanding this, we can also do the same thing with the graph editor. So let me just play this back, see what I got. Okay, that looks somewhat good, but you will notice that the, the, the contact is not very clear. When it is touching the ground, it is not making the impact of touching the ground, which we can fix by using the graph editor. So let's look at the graph editor after this. Let's go to Window, Animation Editors, and Graph Editor. 
Now basically graph editor gives us a graphical view of our keyframes where horizontally we have all the keyframe frames that we have that is from frame number one uh, to 50 so you can see that frame number one two three four and so on and so forth we've got keyframes still uh, here that is 38 so we've got keyframes still 38 and vertically we will have the value so value is let's say for translate y this is the graph for translate y you can see that we started with the value of uh, 8 so that is between 10 and 5 and then it went to 0 then again it went up then it went down then it went up and down and so on and so forth now this is the basic uh, default graph that Maya creates a smooth curve between all the keyframes which we can modify and we will have to modify for our case because we want to create the impact on the ground not a smooth movement back and also we can use this uh, we can ma navigate with the graph editor with the help of alt key so if I press alt key and right mouse button I can zoom in and zoom out and simply you can press F key to frame the entire graph that we have selected if you want to just look at squash you can select squash and press F so that will frame it so let's go ahead and look at translate Y this is what we have to modify right now in order to get this uh, falling effect I just want to deselect it for now I just want to show a, a quick uh, play blast of how this looks so I'll just close that for now let's see how we can fix that I'll select it go to translate Y and this is the place where it is actually hitting the ground you can see if I move back and forth so that is frame number 15 so that's where it is actually creating the contact okay so let's select this and you can see that it has a smooth movement we just have to make it sharp so if I choose this con controller I can make it sharp in one side but the other side is getting affected so let's go ahead and break this handles first right click on the keyframe and choose break tangents click on that now these two things will work independent so I can move this up like so I can move this up like so so now instead of having a smooth curve like this we have a sharp curve now let's go ahead and minimize this deselect and make a play blast there you go so you can see that when it is touching the ground it is actually creating the contact feel that it is hitting somewhere okay we'll have to do the same thing for the second keyframe that's all let's go ahead uh, select the control curve translate and this is the second area select that right click break tangents select it push it up select this push it up let's do the same thing for the last one don't have to break this tangent because the other side doesn't have any keyframe but still if you want to do so you can just leave it like that let's minimize let's deselect and hit play blast there you go so that's the final animation